What's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Ronan and I'll be your host today. So before we get into today's episode, I'm going to need you guys to take a look at the analytics right here. You guys already know the deal. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications and drop a comment so you'll never miss another episode from the channel. But with all that being said, let's get into part three of what if Ash won the Hoenn League. I hope you enjoy. We begin today's part with our heroes traveling in the rugged northwest part of the Hoenn region. As they caress the base of Mount Chimney, everyone is slowly becoming aware of the reason why no one really lives in this part of the region. It's mostly coastline that is surrounded by high, jagged cliffs. The terrain is perfect for training, as Ash has come to see. He uses the rocky and shallow waters to work with Pikachu and Trico on strengthening their iron tail and pound. Even Slackoth has gotten in on the action, attempting to use its slowness to wade in the waters. Unfortunately, the sloth just keeps getting swept out with the tide each time causing Ash to have to break his training so he and the other Mons can save the sloth. This leaves May, Max, and Brock. Brock is keeping himself busy with his newest captures, Cacne and Loted, as they are both oddities to the breeder. He is fascinated by the biology of these Pokemon from Hoenn. Brock has been diligently documenting all of the abilities of every Pokemon in the group, almost like he's creating his own handwritten Pokedex. This leaves May and Max. Max is doing his best to distract himself from the fact that Ash has captured Slackoth by helping May with her contest practice. Unfortunately, this isn't really going too well, as they both have stark differences on how they should approach the whole contest atmosphere. While May thinks her performance should be more on the elegant side, that is, a little bit more flamboyant, Max, being a young kid, thinks that it should be more on the big and flashy moves with power behind them. And this clash in ideals ends up with little in actual results for May's training, but there is one silver lining in the cloud of despair. When Viper is practicing its routine with Torchic and Wurmple, some confusion between the orders of May and Max arises, and Wurmple ends up binding both Torchic and Viper together into a ball of silk. The experience from this is enough to trigger the worm's evolution into Silcoon. While May is upset with Max and they argue a bit, it doesn't take long for her infatuation to kick in as May begins to baby her new bug. With each of their days packed full of training and excitement, the group's time quickly passes by, as they find themselves about a day outside of Fall Arbor Town in a hidden lagoon that offers a nice spot for a day of rest and relaxation. Everyone is in on this. That is, everyone except for Trico. While the others play, the wood gecko chooses to continue its training in the riptides of the shallows. Ash can see Trico pushing itself and urges the grass type to give it a rest, come over and play with the others. But Trico simply ignores its trainer. It continues the intense training regimen as the images of its home being destroyed play in its mind over and over again. Ash is unsure on how to approach this, as he thinks Trico is pushing itself way too hard, but if he pushes, then, well, flashes of Charizard come his mind so for the time being he lets it be as he returns to the group however little do both of them know in the shallow depths lurks a danger that is hunting the group for being in its territory the day goes on as the group continues to play however as the sun begins to caress the horizon the predator of the shallows begins to make its move brock is on the shoreline and has just finished cooking dinner when he calls everyone in that's when it happens first lotad then cacnea are pulled out to open water and attacked before being blasted onto the shore with a powerful water attack, leaving them both knocked out. Then, Seviper is attacked. While the snake is able to put up a bit of a better fight in the water, Seviper is out of its element and it too suffers the same fate, landing on the shore with spirals in its eyes. This just leaves Ash and his Pokemon left in the water. The first target is Slackoth, who sees something speeding through the water like a jet. The normal type is happy to meet this new friend and gladly embraces it with arms wide open. However, Ash tells the sloth that it needs to get out of the way, but it's too late as the lone attacker circles around it and catches it from the back. The predator surfaces and hits Slackoth with an intense double edge. While this didn't hurt the sloth, the attack from the unidentified assailant sends it out into the middle of the lagoon, where it is in the danger of being carried out into the open ocean. Ash calls to it, telling Slackoth to try and swim back in, but the only response he gets is a long, slow, drawn-out cry of its name. While this is now a deep worry of our hero, Ash has another thing on his mind. The underwater hunter has now targeted him and Pikachu. While May and Max and the rest of the Pokemon have all cleared out of the water, those two are still in knee-deep water, with them in the line of assault. But Ash won't let the predator win as he tells Pikachu to use an iron tail. The mouse charges its tail, slamming it down on the shadow of the water. However, there is an intense blowback as a powerful water blast erupts, consuming the mouse. Pikachu Ash yells as he catches it. While Pikachu isn't really hurt, Ash is unsure on how to proceed as a Pokemon finally emerges from the water to reveal itself. May on the shore pulls out her Pokedex to reveal that this Pokemon is a Feebas, something that's normally weak and timid. 
Well, this one isn't, Ash says, as he jumps to the side, barely dodging an attack that's known as Double Edge. However, Ash has little time to recover, as the fish is right back on the assault. Ash calls for Pikachu to use another Iron Tail that clashes with the Feebas, though they are dead even. While the mouse is powerful, the one thing it lacks is size, as the Feebas is far larger than it, and since Pikachu isn't on land, and the fish has the advantage as it bites down on the tail, pulling it under. Now Ash begins to panic, as he frantically chases after the mouse. This is where our last participant takes its place as Trico, with Slackoth on its back, lands with a pound on the head of Feebas, forcing it to release Pikachu. Using its superior speed, Trico grabs the mouse by the tail and bolts back to shallower waters by Ash. Trico, you save both Pikachu and Slackoth. The wood gecko simply looks at Ash as he drops the two, preparing to battle with his Feebas. Smiling, Ash tells Trico if it wants to battle, then they will, but they have to get closer to the shore first. The wood gecko stands ready as Ash runs to drop Pikachu and Slackoth off with the others. However, the wood gecko doesn't have to wait long as Feebas has regained its faculties and is back on the attack. Just as Ash puts Pikachu and Slackoth down, he turns to see Trico's chance. He tells it to use its tail like a shovel and dig into the water under Feebas. The wood gecko does so by lifting the fish out of the water. Then, using a quick attack, Trico pushes Feebas through the air, forcing it, the fish onto the shoreline. Trico follows suit, landing just in front of it. While Feebas is now out of its element, it still resists firing a water pulse at Trico. However, the grass type just takes it, triggering its ability in the process. Really? Overgrow already, Ash thinks? Trico hasn't taken that much damage, but then it hits him. All the training it's done, Trico has hit the limits of its endurance. Ash quickly tells it to stand down, and he can use Pikachu to battle, but the stubborn starter refuses as it faces its opponent. Realizing it won't stand down, Ash proceeds, ordering a quick attack. Quickly, Trico closes the gap with Feebas, much to the fish's surprise. Then, in a demonstration of dominance, Trico latches on to the Feebas and begins to drain its energy with Absorb. The only thing that Ash can do is throw a Pokeball. After three intense shakes, the ball finally stops, securing Ash's third catch of the Hoenn region as the Pokedex registers Feebas. Now, with things a little calmer, the group is able to settle down and Ash releases Feebas at Brock's request so he can look it over after the intense situation that they were just in. While Feebas is a little upset, Set that it lost a battle, it acts civil while being looked over by Brock. This is where the breeder notices that Feebas carries a few battle scars which he points out to Ash. It must be due to an abundance of intense battles. Have you noticed that there are no other water types in this cove? I guess this Feebas chased them all out, declaring it its own territory. Wow, that's some lonely life, Ash says. Well, you won't have to worry about that anymore. We will all be your friends now. To which is seconded by Pikachu and its newest best friend, Slackoth. Feebas is a little unsure on how to accept this show of friendship, as it attacked them first. But as it ponders this, it catches a glare from Trico as it sits in a tree above. Ash sees this, though he isn't sure of what it is. But he won't worry about that now, as the night fades on. The next morning, our heroes pack up camp. They all recall their Pokemon, but someone is missing, Trico. Ash is forced to go in search of the wood gecko, eventually finding it out in the riptides of the lagoon. Ash tries to call for it, but stops when he sees something extraordinary. Trico is trying to move as it slams its tail down into the water. At first, it would seem like it's just some sort of regular training. That is, until the results of the action reveal themselves, as four different rock walls shoot up from beneath the waves. That's rock tomb, Ash thinks. So that's what Trico's been up to this whole time. It's using the intensity of of the water to speed up its training. After only one day and it's able to erect four different walls, wow. It really is amazing. Trico pushes itself harder than any other Pokemon that Ash has ever had, but this could be a problem in the future if Trico pushes itself too hard. Then it could end up permanently hurt. Ash knows he will have to be careful or things between the two could end up strained. But Ash's inner thoughts are interrupted when his friends catch up to him saying it's time to go. With it now time to move on, Ash recalls Trico, who reluctantly abandoned his training so they can move on to their next destination. It takes the rest of the day, but our heroes finally end up in Fall Arbor Town. They make their way to the Pokemon Center to which everyone is able to have their Pokemon looked at. While Nurse Joy checks them all over, May begins to find out about the contest. After all, it's the day after tomorrow, and she needs to find out where to enter. Unfortunately, there is little she can find out at this time as it is very late. However, that doesn't mean May won't see a familiar face. At least one, Harley, the very flamboyant coordinator from the Rustboro contest. He's surprised to see May here and begins to ask if she's lost. This angers the girl, who begins to snap back that she's going to enter the contest and hand him a loss, just like the one he had in Rustboro. However, Harley just laughs, telling May that there's a fat chance of that, especially if she isn't entered yet. After all, his class is already full. 
class, May questions, confused by this remark. Harley begins to snicker even more as he begins to realize just how naive May really is. You really have no idea what kind of contest this is. Well, let old Harley fill you in. The Fall Arbor Contest is what's known as a Super Contest. This is one of a handful spread out over the Hoenn region. Super Contests offer the possibility of winning multiple ribbons over the course of the day if you enter the different classes. I'm entered in the Cute class which closed registration this morning, Harley snickers, hoping to throw May off. But there are still more classes that have openings. At the end of the day, each class winner will get a ribbon to use for entrance into the Grand Festival. Anyways, I hope you get the chance to participate, as you could miss out if you don't make the registration early enough tomorrow morning. Harley then walks away, leaving May speechless. Then her name is called with her friends to pick up their Pokemon. Once they meet at the counter, May fills them in on what she found out from Harley. While this has May a bit panicked, it got Ash thinking, maybe this could work to his advantage. The next morning, at first light, our heroes find themselves at the Fall Arbor Contest Hall, and come to find out Harley wasn't lying. This place is far bigger than the previous contest hall, and it is packed. They quickly rush inside trying to find the registration desk. Luckily, it doesn't take them too long as it is marked by a very long line. May sighs as this could be the reason why she misses her chance at her first contest. So she tries to find a way around asking any officials if there's any faster way to register, but she is met with a dead end at each turn. Reluctantly, she joins her friends in line, who are now about halfway through. May waits impatiently while Ash, Brock, and Max talk. Their calmness in this situation is starting to get to her as she is now twitching at the eye. She is about to explode under all of this pressure. Luckily though, they have finally made it to the front of the line. Quickly, May rushes to the counter to ask if there are any more spots, to which the now nervous official confirms that they still have some spots left in the cute and tough class of the contest, to which May then asks if she would be able to sign up. May asks about the difference in the contest types, to which the official explains that the cute contest is one that requires an entrance. It uses their Pokemon's natural cuteness to melt the hearts of the judges in the crowd. Then in the battle round, the more nimble and delicate one will be the ones that win. While the tough contest is a measure of endurance to see who has the strongest will and can use their moves to establish dominance. While the tough contest doesn't really appeal to May, she thinks that she has the perfect entrance for the cuteness contest, her Silcoon. Without hesitation, she signs up, ready to win. While May is finally relieved, to be in, she is shocked when Ash also enters, asking what he thinks he is doing. Contests are her thing, while gym battles are his. Ash says that's true, but the format of the tough contest seems like it would be a great way for him to bond with Trico, as it has been pushing itself a little too hard lately. Even when Ash isn't training, it still is, and Ash is afraid it will turn out like one of his former Pokemon, to which Brock chuckles, knowing who Ash is talking about. Well, I guess it's okay, May says, since you're not in the same class as me. But stay out of my way, Ash, because I have to go train. May then runs off, leaving the rest of the group standing in confusion. However, Ash isn't going to just be the one left behind. There's a lot of work to do for our hero, and he is off just as quick as May was to start his contest training. This leaves Max and Brock to kind of just wander around the area. But for Brock, this isn't idle time as he has immersed himself in the Pokeblock scene trying to learn whatever he can about the process. This just leaves Max kind of on his own to figure things out for himself. Now we change things over to May as she has found a nice secluded spot to train in. Her strategy is a simple one, Silicoon. The newly evolved bug is so cute that May couldn't resist it, so why would the judges be able to? With her mind made up, the budding young coordinator releases both the Viper and Torchic from their balls to begin working on their debut winning strategy. While in her mind, May is making great progress with Silicon's string shot and hard moves as she just gushes with love every time they are performed, her other Pokemon are not as convinced as Silicon is really just doing one thing and that's standing in place. There isn't really anything happening. Unfortunately, when May asks for the two's opinion, they are less than endearing, causing May to burst with anger, saying that they don't know art when they see it. But her outburst is quickly subdued when a lone onlooker chuckles, telling May that her Pokemon are right. She doesn't really have a routine. Oh, and what would you know? Um, I'm sorry, who are you? She asks. Oh, my name is Drew, the boy says. And for what I know, well, the boy then flashes a case that contains three ribbons. I think I have an idea of what I'm talking about. This quickly causes May to recede into herself as she has yet to build her own set of confidence due to not actually having any contest experience. But then she remembers the hard work they have been putting in and quickly changes her tune to say that her Pokemon are doing fine. 
After all, her silicone is so cute. Who could resist it? But Drew simply smirks. You think that's technique? Then watch this as he throws a Pokeball revealing a grass type Pokemon known as Roselia. Then, with a flick of his hair and an order of a solar beam, the poison flower launches two beams that collide midair bursting with the seven lights of the aurora. You better pack it in. This is no place for someone like you, Drew says, as he and his flower walk off, leaving May searching internally for that confidence she mysteriously lost. Now we follow up with Ash and his secret weapon Trico. While Ash is still concerned about it overtraining, Ash is hoping that this contest will focus it and help the two find familiar ground. So far, things seem to be going great. Ash and Trico seem flawless in their execution of the attacks. The two are pushing hard with Pikachu as the obstacle in their way. Even though Pikachu is a much higher level, Trico's endurance far surpasses its own. The sheer drive of the wood gecko is unlike anything Ash has ever seen. While the two work pushing their limits of what's possible, the two are paid a visit by May's contest rival Harley. While he he chooses not to engage with Ash, he does watch, taking notes on our hero's performance with a sinister smile on his face. Now we find ourselves inside the contest hall with Brock. He has made his way to a crowd around a Pokeblock machine. It seems to be some sort of demonstration. There is a couple that explains the difference in berries and how they affect certain aspects of them to highlight their appearances in contests. This is a gold mine, and Brock is a studious student taking notes on every word that is said. It isn't long before Brock himself attracts the attention of a certain individual who captures his attention and libido. A woman who introduces herself as Grace. She finds Brock's intuitiveness refreshing. The coordinators nowadays don't put their all into the contest. She's glad a new contest hopper like herself is taking things from the beginning and learning everything that he can. While Brock is momentarily blinded by his own desires, he quickly snaps out of it to correct Grace that he is not a coordinator, but someone who likes to learn about all aspects of Pokemon to be the world's top breeder. Well, that's a really big goal, but I think you're on the right path, Grace says. Well, I hope to see you around, she says, as she walks off, leaving Brock a bit lost for words. This just leaves Max, who has found himself outside of the contest hall at a pond that is hidden in some brush. He stares into the water, upset that everyone is off doing their own thing. For the second time on this journey, Max finds himself wondering why he even came on this trip. He's not getting to do anything that would be fun or interesting to him. However, that changed when something wanders into the reflection in the water. Later that night at the Pokemon Center, when all of our heroes meet for food, they all begin to talk about their day. Everyone has something to say, even Max for once. That is, everyone except for May, who is as quiet as a graveyard. The energy of the day has everyone pumped for the contest. But Max notices May's silence and asks if she's okay. The girl nods, just saying she's tired from all of the intense secret training she did today. Well, that's good to hear, Max says. I'm sure you're going to win the ribbon of your class tomorrow. Oh, by the way, May, I have a favor to ask. I met, but May stops paying attention while Max talks, dwelling on her own self-doubt and what that boy Drew said. But her trip to self-doubt is interrupted when Max asks if May is listening. Oh, yeah, sure, that's fine, she says. How about after the contest, May responds. Wow, really, Max says? Thanks, sis, as Max gives her a great big hug. Now we find ourselves in the next morning with all of our contestants at the contest hall. This just leaves the class that Ash enrolled in, the tough class. Ash has made himself known in this competition as the tough class takes place on a field that has many things to test the endurance of you and your Pokemon. However, Ash is supposed to use two Pokemon for this, which he didn't know until the last minute because he didn't read the actual rules. But due to this quick thinking and a very ornery recent catch in Feebas, Ash was able to make his way to the finals, making him the talk of the division. However, there is another here that is garnering just as much praise as Ash as when a redhead boy and his water type Mudkip defies all expectations making it to the finals as rail. Ash comes to know this boy as Morrison. This is his first contest, just like Ash, and he figures winning it would be a great way to warm up for his first gym battle in his hometown of Lava Ridge. This gets Ash's attention as our hero reveals that he already beat the Respiro gym and Lava Ridge is his next stop on the journey to win the Hoenn League, but this little bit of gloating from Ash triggers something in Morrison, a stubborn competitive streak that only Ash could rival, as Morrison confidently declares that he will be the one to win the league. After all, he comes from a long line of strong trainers. As a matter of fact, Morrison is so sure that he will always be second best that he tells Ash that not only will he win here today, but he will get the Lava Ridge Gym Badge before Ash. This begins an argument between the two, leaving Trico a bit embarrassed, while Mudkip is just thinking it's funny, but the two are forced to stop fighting when the finals are called to start 
and they are summoned to the stage. The two boys end their altercation only to take the stage, while May and Drew watch from the other sidelines. May doesn't want anybody to know that she is associated with Ash, while Drew just thinks that both of them are way too pathetic to be called coordinators. Out on the stage, both of these new rivals take their positions as five minutes is put on the clock. Both Ash and Morrison are given the signal to start. Now, there's something we will have to define here about these types of contests. It is a tough style contest. So brute four is the best way to knock out points from your opponent. You don't really need any strategy, just guts, but a well-trained Pokemon will make the difference in this case as it becomes clear that unlike Ash and Trico, who have had time to train and get to know each other, Mudkip and Morrison are the exact opposite as they really don't have any timing. This becomes apparent when Morrison orders a tackle from Mudkip, only for it to get caught in a rock tomb by Trico. Then, with a command of a pound from Ash, the wood gecko one-shots the mudfish in a demonstration of intensity, showing Morrison just how far ahead Ash is in making Ash the winner of the tough class and earning him his first ever ribbon in a contest. May has to pick her jaw up off the ground as she is unsure of what just happened. Ash won a ribbon and it was in the least tactful way possible. Yeah, you'll run in a lot of that at these super contests, Drew says. They're mind-numbing to watch and even easier to win. Basically, anyone with endurance can win a ribbon in that division. But if that's the only one that he ever competes in, then when he gets to the Grand Festival, that boy will lose in the first round. May ask Drew what he means. Wow, you really are a newbie. Well, I have some time before the final round of my division, so I guess I can explain it to you. Spread out over Hoenn are several different contest halls. Out of all of them, there are five like the one that we are in now, known as Super Halls. This is where you see all styles of contest display in the same setting. It's really a great way to see the difference in styles among the divisions, but the rest of the contests are ones that only hold one specific style of contest. May ask if Drew has competed in a single contest style before. The board responds that he has. The one in Rustboro was a smart contest, while the one that is next to be held in Burden Turf Town will be a beautiful class. Wow, that's a lot, May says. How are we supposed to keep up with all that? And that's the point, Drew responds. It's to make you a well-rounded coordinator. When you get to the Grand Festival, your battles will be randomized. If you wish to win there, then you need to be well-versed in all classes. Or, if you're someone like your friend there, then you will think you're a great coordinator and lose in your first round. And this leaves May in silence as Drew is called for the final round of the Smart Contest. Well, it looks like I can't talk anymore. You're going to have to figure out the rest on your own, he says, walking away. May just looks up at the monitor, awaiting Drew's performance. However, it won't be long as Ash joins May watching and complimenting Drew on his abilities to handle his Roselia, which is compounded when Drew wins the round without losing a single point. While Ash is impressed by this, the exact opposite is for May. All of that self-doubt that she had is now amplified tenfold, and guess who's up next? May has to be jolted back to her senses by Ash when she isn't responding to her name being called. May slowly picks herself up and wanders to the contest hall, leaving Ash to wonder if she's okay. Now we find ourselves with May on the battlefield. You see, this is the second round. All she has to do is win this battle and she will get to the finals. While she didn't really struggle in the demonstration rounds as Silicoon was able to do some spinning that it had learned in the brief training session that they had had the day before, unfortunately, this match won't be the same as her opponent is going to be none other than Harley the one who has been giving May a hard time at every chance he can. The start of the battle is called, and both send in their choices, which for May is the Stoic Silicone, while Harley uses his newest catch, a very unbalanced bear, Spinda. Harley gives the order of a dizzy punch, and May just watches, unable to give any command, as we fade from that battle to what's going on with Max and Brock. The two are outside the contest hall, as Max holds a Pokeball that belongs to May. Brock inquires what he is doing with it, only for the boy to respond that he He's fulfilling a promise that May had made to him. The two find themselves at a pond as Max calls out, Hey, I've come back. Who are you calling, Brock says. Just wait, you'll see, Max responds. And sure enough, the surface of the water breaks as a little Pokemon known as Surskit appears and immediately launches itself at Max. This triggers Brock, who sends in Cacnea to stop the assault, but quickly realizes that the bug type isn't hurting Max, but playing with him. Suddenly, the reason they are here becomes clear to Brock, which 
he is unsure if it's something he should let happen. Back with May, she only watches as Silicoon takes the punch, sending it sliding back. Harley comments on this, telling May that he's glad she's wanting to help him by giving him a free win. So just continue to do nothing and he will make it quick. Spinda is then sent in an attack again with another dizzy punch that connects with Silicoon, sending it airbound. In this moment, everything stops for May as she watches her first capture take this beating. The cocoon can do nothing to defend itself and May isn't really helping the situation by staying frozen in place. But then she notices it. Silicoon isn't really giving up. While it has been taking hits, the bug type has been using Harden to slow the damage it takes so it won't lose, hoping May will come around. Then the young trainer feels something in her chest. Her heart is beating very rapidly. But why? Is it because she's going to lose? No, that's not it. Maybe because Silicoon is in danger. Not it, she thinks to herself. But then something happens. A blinding light envelops the contest hall as Silicoon begins to evolve. Suddenly, May's first catch takes its final evolutionary form in Beautifly. The bug type blasts its wings, sending Spinda back to the ground, preventing more damage to itself. Beautifly, did you evolve for me? May asks, to which it confirms. It did it to help May overcome her fear. That's when May realizes that feeling in her chest. It's the unpredictability of battles, the adrenaline she got from it. It's in this moment that May answers a question that she had asked about Ash when they first met. Why is he always so confident in his abilities? It's not that he's confident, it's just he does it for the thrill of never knowing what's going to happen and pushing himself beyond his own limits. That's why Ash is the way he is. Well, beautiful eye, what do you say? Let's win us a ribbon. Unfortunately for May, this is where time is called. Though it was only seconds for her, five minutes had actually passed, and Harley was declared the winner for having more points than May. He begins to rub it in, telling May thanks for the easy victory, but she doesn't hear him, as the only thing that is on her mind is her newly evolved Pokemon. With that, we move on to the final event, to which is the beauty portion of the contest, and the coordinator Grace is easily able to secure her second ribbon. This brings us to the night of the competition, to which our group is talking about the events of the last few days. Ash tells May he's sorry that she didn't win, but she says he shouldn't be. She has some stuff to get over, and she wasn't able to do it in time. But Beautifly was able to help her with it, so the next time, they will be ready. Speaking of which, May hasn't used her Pokedex to find out the info of her new bug type, so she opens it up, but to her surprise, it says that she has two Pokemon registered to her Pokedex. The first one is her Beautifly. The second one is something she hasn't seen before called Surskit. I think this thing is messed up, May says. I don't have this Pokemon. Well, sis, I wouldn't be too sure about that, Max says. And this is where we are going to leave things for now. So tell me, how did you guys like this episode? How do you feel about Ash's team and its newest addition? Do you guys like the way I set up the contest system with the super contests? How did I handle the contest overall? And what is Max up to? And how will it affect May going forward? Let me know in the comments down below. And that's all we have for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed the content that you saw today, and I really hope you come back for future episodes. I really hope you'll consider following me on some of my other platforms, maybe on Twitter or joining my Discord if you like following behind the scenes things, or if you wanna just get to know the community that I've slowly been able to build here the last couple of years on YouTube. Also, if you wanna help support the channel a little bit more, considering joining my Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. I offer exclusive content on both of those platforms for the different tiers, and and it's content that I'm sure you won't want to miss out as it's going to be a long time before it comes to YouTube. But with all that being said, I really hope that you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.